project time. This is a set of lights that was inspired by an ancient Soviet set of Christmas lights, which were based on neons. It doesn't mean it's a Christmas project. It originally was intended as a Christmas project, but it's good for all year use. I have refined it, though. Whereas they had a little plastic form with the wires going in uh, and then the wires were twisted and soldered with resistors inside and then the neon sticking out the end and heat shrink and the plastic kept the sort of the mains voltage connections apart. In my case, I decided to implement it as a circuit board and if I zoom down, you'll see that this actually contains a large number of the circuit boards and it's the snap apart ones, it's V-grooved. <clears throat> I was hoping originally to go to GLC PCB and get the sort of $2 for £5 offer. That did not happen. It turned out it would have been cheaper just getting the manufacturers as individual circuit boards because there was so much extra charge for the uh, the panelization and the, uh, the V-cuts on such a small circuit board that the price went through the roof. Uh, GLC PCB, not a sponsor. I find out what the price actually is when you order these things. So I'm going to try. Should I snap these apart right now or not? Tell you what, I'll show you the theory behind this. It's based around little neon lamps, NE2 lamps, as they're sometimes called. And the idea is, if I'll zoom out again here, that the circuit board has this large pad here for the mains connections. And the wires are going to come in, and they're going to come up to this. There's a wire coming in, and there's a wire going out. And they're going to be twisted together and soldered, zigzaggy, twisty, twisty. And they're going to be soldered onto that. And then the other side, say that's alive on one side, the neutral will be on the other side of the circuit board. And the idea is it provides much better electrical separation. And there's also a good, decent gap uh, from the bottom of the pad down to the bottom here, just so all this can be insulation. Then there's a couple of resistors on either side. The reason I went for so many resistors was just safety, really. So there's four 56K resistors in series for our... Normally, our value of resistor would be 220K. I wanted these to run as cool as possible because there will be heat shrink over it. And then the neon, to actually mount the neon, there's the same on both sides... And the neon, one lead goes to one side, one lead goes to the other. So the pad is on this side for this leg of the neon, and then the other pad is on the other side, so that when I'm actually soldering them, I'll place the neon on like that and twist it, and then just solder onto those pads, keeping taking care not to do it too slowly, because uh, you shouldn't really solder too close to the pinch of neons. Then the whole lot will be sleeved in heat shrink, and that should make it relatively safe-ish. I had hoped to use glue-lined heat shrink. I bought glue-lined heat shrink from eBay. I don't think they sent glue-lined heat shrink. This is what happens. Let's just throw in keywords. So the cable I'm going to be using is this. Let's zoom down this because uh, you'll see more. The cable I'm using is double insulated. It's meter cable for like uh, test leads and meter leads. And uh, it's got an inner white core and an outer black core. The reason I use this is simply because it's rated for mains voltage. It is double insulated. It's the same as they use on British Christmas lights. So I just thought it would be a good idea. So let's have a go at this and see how, how it's going to be. I've not tried building any of these yet. So I'm going to take two and I'm going to twist the wires together. Twist them together and then flow some solder on. Not even sure if this is the correct sequence to do things, but it is how I will be doing it. So I've got to flow some solder onto these and then crop them down to size because I've got a feeling that when you heat cables like this, the heat, the sleeving tends to peel back a bit. This is where I completely miss the solder because uh, all the light is from the other side. That's all right. So I shall do this as a test one first. Crop that down. And then, since I've now flowed soda onto this, I shall put it onto this pad down here, and I'll reflow it, hold it at a good height so that there is plenty of uh, insulation for the wires, and we'll see how that goes. That looks all right. It could be more central, but I was trying to get the wires more central. I'll be more careful next time. Then, I repeat by taking this lead here and twisting it onto the next one along, Soldering that, and then soldering it onto the next circuit board along. They might be better separated for this, I'm not really sure. This is the prototype. You're seeing the first one being built right now. Crop it off. This is where the snips make a loud clack noise that makes the, the microphone pop. 
sometimes happens. And then I shall place that down there, and I shall reflow it. He said, showing some slight indecision with the iron. Now, am I getting any sharp spikiness here for the heat shrink? No, it's it's feeling pretty good. Right, well, tell you what, I'm going to pause while I solder the other ones along, and then I'll solder the other polarity on the other side, and then I'll be back, and we'll try putting the neons on and see how that works. Um, yep, I'll do that right now. Well, that turned out to be so therapeutic and easy to do that I just went the full section and did them all the way along here. Now, the resistors, I'll zoom down and show you the resistors here. The surface mount resistors are 1206. It's just a nice big chunky size, and I like those big chunky resistors. And I tried two techniques for soldering these on. I tried manually soldering them on, and I tried the uh, solder paste, just applying it manually onto that. I'm just actually seeing one of the resistors that doesn't look like it has any solder. One moment, please. Where is the, where is the solder? Uh, where is the solder? There it is. But I found that for both of them, I, I quite liked reflowing them with a, a bit of fresh um, flux and the hot air gun. Yeah, this is going to work a lot better if I solder this resistor. That would be a lot better. The hot air, air gun is uh, definitely making them reflow and make them all sit down properly was better. Now I'm going to check the others. Yeah, these ones all look pretty good. Now comes a bit where I try and put the neons on, so I'm going to have to snap it along the V slot here. Ooh. Uh, and now comes the moment of truth for putting these on. What sort of length do I want on the... I want roughly six millimetres, which is about a quarter of an inch. So I shall crop this neon at that distance and I shall pre-tin its leads. I'm also going to grab some more soda shortly. But let's try this one first. Is this going to be as easy as I was hoping it was going to be? little blob of soda on each lead. And then I shall start at that end, making sure I don't push it right down onto the resistor. If anything, it could have been a wee bit shorter. But you know, this is the prototype. I want to leave the leads relatively longish. So I'm going to flow that soda on. That seemed to work okay. And then I'm going to turn it over and position that lead. And I'm going to flow that lead on, which also worked okay. That is a very easy thing to do. Right, okay, next to neon. And then I'll pause uh, while I do the others, just so you don't have to have to watch me soldering every single one on. Let me crop this just a little tiny bit shorter. Grab the solder. It's a new rule of solder. It's an old rule of solder of unknown origins. It feels different. Uh, although it's a prominent brand, I think, it is old. I don't know if uh, Flux ages. I don't think it ages. So now, oh, this is going to get a wee bit tricky because uh, maybe I should snap that one off first. So I shall snap this one off the end of here first. That's better. And then I shall put this one on. That is better. That leaves a lot more room for soldering. Can you see okay here? I think you can see okay. Technically speaking, I should zoom down further, but there is a limit before it all goes a bit pixely. Ooh. Yeah, that's kind of close to the resistor down below. I, I may have to experiment with the spacing of this. It is a prototype, though. That's all right, though. It is very low current. It's only about one milliamp, if that. Uh, I like to keep the... Current low with neons. Oh, I've just snapped off one of the other circuit boards. Well, that's going to give me a chance to uh, try it. Ugh. Oh, is this v, v cut actually going to work? I may have to grip this in this another way. Hold on, where is a pair of long nose pliers? I shall grip it there without going near the resistors and just snap it. There we go, it's not too bad, it's not too bad. Grab another neon, and then I shall pause while I do the others. This is just a trial and error at the moment to see how it all goes together. Hopefully I'm managing to remain in focus. There is a certain focal zone on my bench. How is it for just a bare circuit board on its own? It's not too bad, actually. 
it's not too bad on pre-severated circuit boards. So reflowing the solder here and reflowing it here. That's working. Right, I shall pause while I solder all the other neons on. And then I'll come back when we're putting the heat shrink on. One moment, please. So far, so good. This is a very pleasant task. Now it is time to put the heat shrink on. The heat shrink covers the neon. Make sure there are no spiky points pointing up that could damage the heat shrink. Adhesive lined heat shrink would add an extra layer of sort of, shall we say, uh, cable restraint. I'm not sure it's official cable restraint, but it's good enough for me. And I'm going to heat these up. I may turn the amount of hot air up just a wee tad. And we'll shrink this shrink down onto the circuit board and see how it looks. So far so good, quite slow. A proper big hot air gun would really do this so much better. Maybe I should slide it down a little bit more over the neon. Uh, but so far so good. That looks all right. But tell you what, this one has the four wires going into it. Is it going to be harder to get the heat shrink over? I shall zoom down just a little bit. Just a little bit so you can see what's happening here. And slide this down maybe just a bit further. If I can. It, it doesn't feel like it's sliding down very easily. Oh, there it goes. I'll leave the pip of the neon just sticking out the end this time. Hot air gun. I shall just preheat it and then shrink it on. Double check that there are no pointy bits or solder strands uh, or peaks in the solder or wire strands sticking up, just in case they pierce the, the heat shrink. Although, to be honest, it couldn't be any worse than a lot of the Chinese uh, grey import lights you get at Christmas time. This feels pretty good. This feels okay. Right. Next sleeve, and then I shall pause momentarily while I put the others on so you don't have to watch me. Basically... Well, it's not so much watching wet paint dry, it's watching hot heat shrink shrink. That'll do. Hot air pen. Part of a generic Chinese Yahua uh, soldering station. Possibly not the very best in the world, but actually okay. Certainly it does the job. In this situation, I'd probably want a proper... If I was doing a lot of these, I might want a bigger hot air gun. But having said that, this does give better control and reduces the risk of uh, melting all the insulation. Right, tell you what. I'm going to pause momentarily while I finish this. One moment, please. Okay, it is time for the moment of truth. I'm going to just zoom down onto the... The bench here, I'm going to double check that I have heat shrink them all. I did that the last time that I, I did one before where they were all hardwired with inner bits of sleeve over resistors. And uh, at the end I was fingering them going, oh they look pretty good. I didn't realise one of them didn't have heat shrink on it. I didn't make contact with it but it was pointed out by many people who viewed the video and were holding their breath when I was uh, fingering near live connections. These things happen. I try not to let them happen. Right here, uh, let's plug this in and see how it looks. For extra safety, it might be an advantage to put an extra bit of that short bit of sleeving over here and shrink it on before putting a larger diameter bit across, just as an extra layer. I shall bring up the flickery happy. The flickery happy. And we shall stuff the wires haphazardly. Actually, no, I'll, I shall unplug it before stuffing them haphazardly into the flickery hobby. I'll zoom out for this. Uh, this is the completely non-compliant electrical connection point. And theoretically, they're either going to go bang if I've got a, a George Michael, a careless whisker, or they will glow orange. They are glowing orange. They are all glowing orange. It's not super mega bright. Power consumption for the whole string is 2.6 watts. Power factor is 0.962. Current is about 11 milliamps, which is just under 1 milliamp per neon. Let me just uh, turn the exposure off. 
and uh, click this off, and you can see the Neans and the non frickery Hoppy. They are very nice. These were generic Chinese Neans. Well, I guess they're probably all made in China, but these ones came from a seller on eBay. Slight flicker, yeah, you can see a slight flicker if I shake it, as they do. Uh, a very soft, diffuse colour. They look nice. They look very nice. And that sort of roughly about one milliamp is pretty good. Uh, so that is it. Um, those circuit boards. I, uh, if anybody's interested, I'll put the design up. But the design is literally... Oh, I'm going to have to bring the light back. One moment, please. The light is coming back. Watch your eyes. The light is back. Uh, I could put the design up, but... Um, it is just a single circuit board. You can either get it panelised by whoever you get it made. Check the prices. As I say, with GLC PCB, it went through the roof. Um, the resistors for 230, 240, Europe, Australia, UK. Uh, the resistors I use, I'm going to have to check what resistors I use. 56K or something? 56K, 5602. There are 1201 size resistors, 56K, four of them. If you were doing this in... Uh, America, for instance, you'd have to find the recommended resistor value for a neon indicator and then divide it by four for each of those resistor positions or put links in some of them because uh, there's much less dissipation in the on 120 volts for the neon than there is in 240. You can also, I wouldn't recommend overdriving neons because uh, it does shorten the life greatly, but you can also underrun them significantly and it does decrease the brightness, but it also makes the arc unstable. It will actually waver up and down the electrodes, which is actually quite nice. It gives it a slight candly flickery effect. But that's it. I am happy with that. Uh, it's a nice little string. It's a fairly compact and well sleeved string of uh, the Neen indicator lights um, that I would comfortably use on a tree. The wiring is kind of thick, but that's just because it is double insulated wire. Um, but uh, I suppose you could use thinner wire if you had confidence or there weren't people eating bits of the tree if you put it on your Christmas tree. Kids, pets, whatever. But yeah, 11 milliamps for what turned out to be 13 neons. That's about the 1 milliamp per neon, so that's pretty good. Yeah, I like that. That project worked out pretty well.